Watchtower, Adventists and Freemasonry. Many of the beliefs and symbols included in Watchtower publications during the leadership of Russell are what Jehovah's Witnesses now claim to be of pagan and even a cult background. If you enjoyed The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown and are interested in the development of modern religion, you will be intrigued by this section. A number of the symbols and teachings discussed by Brown as having origins with the Knights Templar, Freemasons and Illuminati, and tracing back to the Egyptians, have been used by Mormons, Christian Science and Russell's Watchtower Bible students. The term Watchtower, Golden Age, Jehovah, New World Order, All-Seeing Eye, Winged Sun Disk, Two Columns, Pyramids and Russell's strong Zionist stance are part of Freemasonry. A great deal of discussion has centred on whether Russell, the founder of the Watchtower Society, had connections with Freemasons due to the many Masonic symbols introduced under his leadership. The evidence is not conclusive that Russell adopted these beliefs from Freemasons and it is probable that he took these beliefs and symbols from Second Adventists. It raises the question that if this is truly the only religion directed by Jehovah, why God allowed, or even directed, symbols of this kind to identify his people even well after the claim cleansing of his spiritual temple in 1919? Watchtower The term Watchtower and Watchtower Society which identify the organisation behind Jehovah's Witnesses and their magazine, are a namesake from the Adventist movement. The Proclaimer's book admits this on page 48, saying, The expression Watchtower is not unique to Russell's writings or to Jehovah's Witnesses. George Storrs published a book in the 1850s called The Watchtower or Man in Death and the Hope for a Future Life. The name was also incorporated in the title of various religious periodicals. Pyramid Russell had great interest in the Pyramid of Giza and its relationship with Bible prophecy. Watchtower continued to use the Pyramid of Giza as part of prophecy until the 1930s. Russell's belief in the sign of the Pyramid most likely came from the Second Adventists. In 1859, John Taylor published The Great Pyramid, Why Was It Built and Who Built It? He put forward the idea that the architect and supervisor of the Great Pyramid was not an Egyptian, but Noah. Other pyramidologists believe it was Melchizedek. In 1877, Joseph Seiss also published a book on the pyramid entitled Miracle in Stone. George Storrs then ran a series of articles on the pyramid and its prophetic significance in the Herald of Life and the Coming Kingdom. In June 1876, Piazzi Smythe, an astronomer, published an article in the Bible Examiner, a journal owned by George Storrs in Brooklyn. Russell attributed his knowledge on pyramids to Smythe. In thy kingdom come, here, thanks to the very accurate measurements of all the passages, furnished by Professor Smythe, we are enabled to reach what to us are by far the most interesting features of the testimony of this witness yet delivered. Thy Kingdom Come states, Professor Smythe found the first of these measures to be 1874 pyramid inches, the second 1881 pyramid inches and the third 1910 pyramid inches. Thus reduced, they would give the dates October 1874, October 1881, and October 1910 AD. These three dates were important in early Watchtower prophetic doctrine. Pyramids are a major aspect of Freemason teaching and many pagan religions. They were generally used as temples and played an important part in the belief of the afterlife. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica DVD 2002, pyramids have been built at various times in Egypt, the Sudan, Ethiopia, Western Asia, Greece, Cyprus, Italy, India, Thailand, Mexico, South America, and on some islands of the Pacific Ocean. Those of Egypt and of Central and South America 
are the best known. Russell's interest is particularly in the Great Pyramid of Giza built for Cheops. It is the northernmost of a group of three pyramids built in Giza and is the late largest and oldest of the three, estimated by archaeologists to have been built over 4,000 years ago. It is considered the most colossal single building ever erected. Its base points are accurately oriented to the four cardinal points of the compass. Russell's belief in the measure of the pyramids was based on passages from Isaiah 19 and Jeremiah 32. The Bible Students Monthly, Volume 5, Number 11, states, In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, for a sign and for a witness. Not only did God mention prophetically the Great Pyramid in Isaiah, but also in Jeremiah 32.20, where we read that, he set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day. Russell believed that the sign of Egypt was related to the dimension of the Pyramid of Giza. In the early 1900s, he went to Egypt to measure the pyramid and claimed that the passage of the Great Pyramid of Giza was 2,170 inches and that it was built in 2,170 BCE. The significance of this teaching is highlighted by having over 60 pages devoted to it in Thy Kingdom Come. In a monumental display of deceit, when Russell revised his doctrine to focus more on 1914 than 1874, he updated his pyramid measurements in later editions of Thy Kingdom Come to suit his new interpretation. Russell originally used the size of a pyramid to prove that 1874 marked the beginning of the period of trouble, as shown in the 1891 edition of Thy Kingdom Come. In the 1911 edition of Thy Kingdom Come, Russell changed the pyramid measurements by 41 inches to show that 1914 would be the beginning of trouble. Whilst the 1891 edition says we find it to be 3,416 inches, and hence the pyramid witnessed that the close of 1874 was the chronological beginning of the time of trouble, the 1911 edition said we find it to be 3,457 inches, and thus the pyramid witnesses that the close of 1914 will be the beginning of the time of trouble. Charles Taze Russell is buried in a family-owned grave at the Rosemont United Cemetery in Pennsylvania. Next to his grave is a pyramid erected as a memorial. Weighing several tons, it is complete with symbols of the Knights Templar, All-Seeing Eye, and the inscription Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. This cemetery contains the remains of known masons, and it is claimed that Russell was embalmed at death. A Masonic temple built after Russell's death overlooks his grave. The souvenir report of the Bible Students' Convention in 1919 discusses the funeral of Russell, saying, At the grave on Monday, a party of about 150 was conducted by Brother Bonnet to the grave of Brother Russell. It then mentions, In the exact centre of the Bethel lot will be erected diagonally the pyramid-shaped monument as designed by Brother Bonnet and accepted by Brother Russell as the most fitting emblem for an enduring monument on the society's burial space. The size of this structure is 9 feet across the base and its apex stone is exactly 7 feet above the ground surface level. Watched our belief in pyramidology continued under the leadership of Rutherford as late as 1925. The Watchtower 1922 June 15 edition says, in the messages of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the agreement of one or two measurements with the present-day truth chronology might seem accidental, but the correspondency of dozens of measurements proves that the same God designed both pyramid and plan. This teaching was absolutely torn apart and discarded by Rutherford in the Watchtower 1928, November 15, over a five-page series. On page 344 he stated, Then Satan put his knowledge in dead stone, which may be called Satan's Bible, and not God's stone witness. In erecting the pyramid, of course, Satan would put in it some truth, 
because that is his method of practising fraud and deceit. Was Rutherford implying that Russell, the religion's founder, was guided by Satan to promote this teaching? It is astounding that after using pyramids to prop up the 1914 teaching for so many decades, that such a dramatic change would occur. Since that time, Watchtower contains a discernible lack of mention of its historical stance on pyramidology. When the 2012 Watchtower, August 15, page 31, displays an image of the chart of the ages from the divine plan of the ages, it conveniently obscures the pyramid behind an overlay of Benjamin Barton. Pyramidology was not a mainstream teaching of Christendom that Bible students had inadvertently inherited, such as Watchtower claims regarding other early practices such as Christmas. It was an Adventist teaching that Russell introduced. Neither did Jesus cleanse Watchtower of this teaching when he came to his spiritual temple in 1919, as Rutherford continued to promote it till the late 1920s. Though Rutherford claims it was from Satan's Bible, he himself had written about it, and Russell had introduced it under the guise of being directed by Holy Spirit as God's chosen mouthpiece. Cross and Crown Watchdale used the cross and crown for over half a century, until 1931. Bible students wore cross and crown pendants, and the image adorned the cover of the Watchtower magazine. An image of Charles Russell shows him seated below the cross and crown, mounted in his study. Proclaimer's book on page 200 says, For years, Bible students wore a cross and crown as a badge of identification, and this symbol was on the front cover of the Watchtower from 1891 to 1931. But in 1928, it was emphasised that not a decorative symbol, but one's activity as a witness showed he was a Christian. In 1936, it was pointed out that the evidence indicates that Christ died on a stake, not a two-beamed cross. Whilst Proclaimers mentions that the Bible students wore a cross and crown, this brief reference fails to explain what this symbol represented and why they used the cross and crown. Cross and crown is a symbol synonymous with Christian sects and secret societies such as the Illuminati and Christian scientists and also appears on some Catholic churches. The cross and crown is also referred to as the Knights Templar as it is used to identify the Freemasonry group, the Knights Templar, in honour of the 12th century knights that are said to have devoted their lives to the Crusades, protecting pilgrims to Jerusalem and guarding the Holy Grail. The crown symbolises the heavenly reward, and the cross is for the trials of life endured as a Christian. A wreath surrounds the cross and crown that appeared on the Watchtower cover. The wreath symbol also is used in the United Nations and Star Trek logos, both heavenly influenced by Freemasons. In 1933, the cross and crown was identified as an idol, and in 1935, the cross started to be described as pagan. Preparation in 1933 said, All idols of character development and foolish hobbies, such as the Pyramid of Egypt, chronology, tabernacle in the wilderness, cross and crown pins, and all like things, must be cut off and put away. The cross and crown were used for over 50 years, and appear on each side of the pyramid monument that adorns Russell's grave. If Watchtower is Jehovah's organisation and directed by his Holy Spirit, why would Jehovah allow Watchtower for decades to promote what it now claims is pagan symbology? The Winged Sun Disc The Winged Sun Disc is an Egyptian religious symbol used by Freemasons and occult groups that appeared on the cover of Studies in the Scriptures a Masonic reference work, The Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man, describes the winged sun disk in this way. Horace commanded Thoth that the winged sun disk, with your eye, should be brought into every sanctuary within he dwelt, and into every sanctuary of all the gods of the lands of the south and the north, and in Amatet, in order that they might drive away evil from therein. This is what is meant by the winged sun disks, with the Uri, 
which are seen over the entrances of the courts of the temples of all the gods and goddesses of Egypt. The Rosicrucian Order, AMORC, for Ancient and Mystical Order Rose Crucius, is an occult organization that uses the winged sun disc as their logo. A Rosicrucian reference work, the Rosicrucians and their teachings, says this about the winged sun disc or globe. The winged globe is preeminently a Rosicrucian symbol, although the Luminati may lay claim to it, and it may be admitted that it is of Egyptian origin. The winged globe is the symbol of the perfected soul, making its flight back to the source of its creation in the Elysian fields beyond. This is not a common symbol of Christianity that Russell inadvertently borrowed. This was an unchristian symbol solely of pagan origins. In more modern times, Watchtower has described this symbol as pagan, carefully avoiding mention that this symbol was used by Watchtower itself. All-Seeing Eye Crowning Russell's pyramid is the All-Seeing Eye, a symbol used by Freemasons, Mormons, in occult worship, Buddhism, and appears on the American dollar bill. Other names for this are Eye of Horus, or Uchat Eye, as it is associated with both the Egyptian god Horus, god of war, and his father, Osiris, who along with Isis comprise the Egyptian triad. Called the mal evil eye, this object is regarded by Satanists as the symbol of Lucifer. It is known to have been Satanist Alistair Crowley's favourite symbol. To understand why Russell had an interest in the all-seeing eye, we can look to the meaning bestowed upon it by Freemasons. The MasonicDictionary.com says, The all-seeing eye may then be considered as a symbol of God manifested in his omnipresence, his guardian and preserving character, to which Solomon alludes in the book of Proverbs, when he says, The eyes of Jehovah are in every place, beholding, or as it might be more faithfully translated, watching the evil and the good. The reason Freemasons use this symbol invokes biblical connotations, yet has pagan origins. YHWH the Tetragrammaton and word Jehovah have been used by Freemasons over the centuries. PhoenixMasonry.org states, Another important symbol is the ineffable name with which the series of ritualistic symbols will be concluded. The Tetragrammaton or ineffable word, the incommunicable name, is a symbol, for rightly considered it is nothing more than a symbol that is more than any other, except perhaps the symbols connected with sun worship, pervaded the rites of an antiquity. Star. The star on the original Watchtower seal has Masonic connotations, being used on Masonic seals as well. Two columns. Two columns appeared on the invitation to the photodrama of creation. These columns have Masonic origins explained at sacredtexts.com. It explains there that you entered the lodge between two columns and that these represented Jackin and Boaz. Pleiades constellation. The Pleiades are a dipper shaped cluster of stars situated in the shoulder of the constellation Taurus. To the ancient Romans, the constellation of the Pleiades was known for its association with homosexuality. In the 20th century, it was popularized by the UFO and flying saucer buffs. Also known as the Seven Sisters, it is mentioned in the Bible in Job 9 verse 9, Job 38 31, and Amos 5 verse 8. The constellation symbol is found on the west tower of the Mormon temple and was known by the Egyptians as the Dragon of the Seven Stars. I've heard Jehovah's Witnesses belittle the Mormon belief that they shall rule on planets as gods. It may surprise these people that both Russell and Rutherford taught that when they died, they would be taken to the Pleiades constellation, which is said to be the dwelling place of God. This is a close parallel with the Mormon belief that on their resurrection, they become gods on various planets. Russell took this idea from Sice, Sice taught that the physical construction of the Great Pyramid indicated that Alcyon, 
the central star in the Pleiades constellation, is at the centre of the universe. This belief appears in the Studies in the Scriptures, Series 3 on page 327. Rutherford continued with the teaching in the 1928 book Reconciliation, writing, The constellation of the seven stars forming the Pleiades appears to be the crowning centre around which the known systems of the planets revolve, even as our sun's planets obey the sun and travel in their respective orbits. It has been suggested, and with much weight, that one of the stars of that group is the dwelling place of Jehovah and the place of the highest heavens, that it is the place to which the inspired writer referred when he said, Here though from thee dwelling place, even from heaven. The Pleiades is the place of the eternal throne of God. Page 14. Mention of Pleiades is also in Creation from 1927 on page 94. This doctrine was not discontinued until 1953 in the Watchtower of November 15, page 703. There it went on to say, Some attribute striking qualities to these constellations or star groups, and on the basis of such they then offer private interpretations of Job 38, verse 31 and 32, that amaze their hearers. Their views are not always sound from the standpoint of astronomy, and when viewed scripturally they are completely without foundation. Hence, it is useless to indulge in unprofitable speculations. Incidentally, Pleiades can no longer be considered the centre of the universe, and it would be unwise for us to try to fix God's throne as being at a particular spot when or in the universe. Were we to think of the Pleiades as his throne, we might improperly view with special veneration that cluster of stars. The Watchtower subtly blames the members, saying some attribute striking qualities, but does not refer to the fact that the reason the members had this belief was that it had been taught in Watchtower publications. Astrology and Spiritualism Russell was not only into Egyptology, but also referred to astrology for confirmation of his predictions. In the 1905 Watchtower, October 1, he said... In a dozen publications of this present springtime all over Europe, astrologers agree that an extraordinary period is approaching. Watchtower, 1903, May 1st, page 131, stated, Jupiter, representing law, religion and morality, has been perforce subservient to Saturn's greater and more potent force. When Uranus and Jupiter meet in the humane sign of Aquarius in 1914, the long-promised era will have made a fair start in the work of setting man free to work out his own salvation and will ensure the ultimate realisation of dreams and ideals of all. The 1933 book Occult Theocracy, tracing religious occult beliefs throughout history, includes discussion of the Watchtower Society. It says, In 1879, Russell founded the Watchtower Society of which he was the sole editor. The Russellite teaching, drawing its own arbitrary conclusions and proclaiming them as final, professes to prove from biblical sources that all Christian churches are evil and corrupt, that the time of the Gentiles ended in 1914, and that the Jews must henceforth reign supreme over the world. It also elaborates an occult dogma alleged to be based on biblical precedents. A look at the history of Jehovah's Witnesses show Russell was greatly influenced by Masonic teachings, partly due to the views of Adventist teachers around him. These were not a minor error on his part, but rather well-developed teachings that were promoted for 50 years, well into the leadership of Rutherford. Long after Jesus is said to have inspected and cleansed his organisation in 1919, Jehovah's Witnesses continued to promote these pagan views as truth. It is difficult to reconcile these teachings with Watchtower statements that they are the only channel the Lord uses to feed his members with truth and that there have been no significant change in the truths that they have promoted. <laughs>